What's up guys, Johnny here, welcome back. Today we're talking throttle caps. So I'm sure you've seen a little bit of the hype that's gone around the last you know, few weeks, month or so. Um, I know Shames did a video, I've definitely heard things from uh, Heads Up FPV and a few others talking about how putting throttle caps on your quads makes you go faster, right? That counterintuitive kind of thought process that making my quads slower actually makes me faster on the track. So what I decided to do is I'm not the kind of guy who just likes to take the hype train and run with it. What I want to do is I say, you know what, that's interesting. Let me go put it to the test myself. So that's what I actually did for you. Two different days, what I actually did is I went out to the field um, and tried running with different throttle caps and seeing what difference it made. I captured the data so I can go look back and say, hey, was I actually faster with the throttle cap? Was I slow with the throttle cap? What did I learn through that process? So the data process that I followed is I started at 50% throttle cap, flew the track, Got come to 50%, went up to 60%, threw that, went up to 70%, flew that, went up to 80%, flew that, went up to 100%. Now I tried it two different days. So what you're gonna see is the first day I tried it, I got two batteries in 100% because the sun was going down. Um, so I didn't get a chance to do the full round of testing that I wanted. Across another day, I get in a lot more at 100%, which kind of let me compare that to the other data and see where it stood. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it. I don't want to talk for too long. I want to get into seeing that flight footage, talking about what I learned by doing that flight and uh, what the data had to show for us. So this first track here that you're taking a look at, I have flown this track before. Uh, the important thing to keep in mind is we're actually using standard multi-GP sized uh, 5x5 gates. Um, what you're seeing here also is the first time I've flown at 50% throttle cap. Uh, probably ever. So definitely taking some getting used to. You saw some real messy lines out there. Um, really wide lines. I do not know how to control this thing 50%. But the thing you're going to notice is that I do figure it out pretty quickly. So this is my second lap here at 50%. It's already looking a lot better than the first one. Um, you can see someone else I'm actually flying with. He's actually flying at 50% as well. Um, but I'm just starting to figure things out. How do I fly 50%? How does this work out? Um, and how do I learn to push this thing? So anyway, 50%, you start to see a lot of full throttle out there, obviously, because it's not a lot of power on the quad. Um, it was a big learning experience here. Uh, but anyway, as you see, as I get on to, you know, a few rounds later, as I'm starting to learn how to fly 50%, you can see that the lines are really starting to clean up. So this particular round here is actually my fastest round at 50%. You can start to see things are really tightening up around these lines, starting to feel real smooth. I remember as I was doing this, it's actually a really cool feeling while you're flying because you feel like, it's like, man, I fly like Alex Van over or something like that. Uh, just because the way you can take lines, it almost looks like that really smooth, flowy, like how did you even take that line? You just got to double the speed and then it feels kind of like one of those guys. But, uh, but yeah, definitely getting things down, starting to put in some good lap times on this particular course. Um, this section here is really demanding on throttle. So doing it at 50% is really, really tough. Um, but you can see it's starting to come together. You can, I'm learning how to fly the track at 50%. This is actually a lot of fun to fly. Um, and the important thing to me is, you know, is this a race pace or not? What happens when I go up to the next level? What happens when I go to 60%? Uh, so that's what you see right here. So now that we're up at 60%, um, it actually takes a little bit of getting used to, you know, it feels a little bit sloppy to start just because there's so much added power going from 50% to 60%. It's basically a 20% faster quad than I had before. So it's taking a little bit of time to learn. Um, you can see a big mess up there uh, spinning out. Uh, but the thing that actually I found really interesting is when I first tried this, I was really concerned that as I started changing my throttle caps, I'd really be inhibited as I change things because I'm just, my muscle memory be all off. I wouldn't be used to flying it. But you can see here, I did one lap and it was a messy lap, but almost immediately things smoothed way out. And I'm flying those same sorts of lines. I was flying at 50%. But now I'm doing it way faster at 60%. You watch that throttle on the bottom left. It's it's almost like VRL style racing. Lots of full throttle, um, which makes it a lot of fun. It feels like you're going really fast at the time, even though you know, um, especially when you bump that throttle cap up, that it's really not as fast as the quad can go. But it is actually a pretty fun way to do some racing. So you can see here now we're again at the uh, later in the day, as I've learned 60%, starting to clean those lines way up. Now, this is when it really started to feel like a lot of fun. Uh, just you can keep those nice tight lines. You learn about where do I turn to keep this thing going. One of the really cool lessons that you learn, if you watch my other video where I start talking about turning early, the highlights of when to turn really were exacerbated by doing 
uh, throttle cap racing. You really have to plan out your turns when you have that throttle cap. You just don't have the power to pull out of it. Um, and the same lines that you learn while doing this throttle cap racing actually apply as you start bumping things up. But yeah, this was a lot of fun here at 60%. It's starting to feel pretty fast around the course. Just nice, clean lines, especially that dive gate right there. Almost bottomed out, so maybe that's not the best example, but still... You know, starting to learn this track, learn how to fly. And again, these are standard 5x5 multi-GP gates. All right, so now we're going up to 70%. I can tell you from memory, 70% was actually really, really fascinating. This one on this particular track felt almost like a sweet spot. It felt like I can keep things tight, but yet it had a lot of power too. And again, same thing. I just went from 60 to 70%. You can see a mistake there. The quad fly is a bit different. Um, but the thing you'll see is it doesn't take long to figure it out. Um, so like I was saying, I was really worried about doing that because if I want to do this on an actual race day, I was kind of concerned that I'd run into an issue where I went to bump it up and all of a sudden I was hitting everything and messing up. But you can see it really doesn't take long to figure out the new throttle cap. So that really put my concerns to rest that if I put in this strategy of like fly at a lower throttle cap, try to learn the and go up. Um, am I going to start making mistakes at a race? I don't think so. I think it actually works out pretty well. And you can see right here, this is my very first pack at 70%. It's feeling really, really good. All right. So now as we get a little bit more used to 70%, we start kicking it up. We start trying to do more and more full throttle around the track. It's starting to look a lot faster than we've seen before. Overall, this is feeling really good. You can tell 70% is definitely faster for me around the track than uh, 60%. Um, so again, we're testing that theory of adding a throttle cap to slow yourself down actually makes you faster around the track. So, so far, we're not seeing that as we keep going up in our throttle position, we can see that we're getting faster and faster on this particular course. Um, I think this is a somewhat technical track, especially with these small gates, but it's not a super technical track. Um, but again, like that turn rip really, really, really slows you down. Um, it's a tough one to take at high speeds. All right, so now going up to 80%. We're starting to get pretty late in the day, so I don't have a lot of rounds to actually do 80% racing. I think I did a total of four rounds at 80%. Um, but again, this is my first time putting it up to 80%. Uh, you can see I'm not really pushing that 80% too much. Um, or definitely around these turns and getting into this section, I was at 80%. But for the most part, I'm not pushing quite as much, uh, which probably means this wasn't that much faster. But again, this was actually a little bit faster than 70%. So still we're learning that as we're doing racing, we can learn to go up in our throttle percent and still get faster on the course. My lines are starting to get a little bit messy, but again, first time going faster on the course with that 80% throttle cap. Overall, lines are still pretty clean, looking okay. Looks like I know what I'm doing at 80% uh, before we get really, really used to it. So you can see here now, definitely pushing things up, using more and more of that 80% throttle that's available to me, keeping nice, smooth lines. It feels like those things that I was learning at 60%, 70%, I'm able to apply them to 80%. Um, honestly, just from feeling and recollection, I feel like because I did those throttle cap runs earlier, it gave me a better appreciation for how to take each turn, uh, just because you couldn't rely on the power of the quad but now as i learned how to do those turns around the track i'm able to take use of the added power of the 80 percent and really push myself around this track so this is starting to feel real real good around this particular track really happy with these lines here beautiful dive there that was a lot of fun and you just see that peg 79 percent just so much of this flight and uh, there goes my battery all dead. So you can see I flew for less than a minute and a half at 80%, just and that battery is totally spent. Now, unfortunately this day, I only had one chance to run at 100%. I wanted to see how it would go, but you can see it's really, really dark. It's coming to the end of the day, and this is a messy run. So it is not looking clean. I want to see what it's like. Can I take those lessons I learned to really apply them? But you see these turns are just totally a mess. Uh, this flying obviously is not as good or as clean as 80% and what we saw. Um, but the thing to keep in mind is this is one pack at 100% as I was learning it. Uh, would it have gotten better if I had more than one pack? I don't really know. Um, but just keep this in mind as we do our testing. Again, the theory would be that flying at 80%, I'm actually going to be faster than I would be at 100%. At least that's true for most pilots. Um, again, if you watch that Shames video, he mentioned, you know, heads up FPV and many other super, super fast pilots and how they are faster at that uh, throttle cap number. So we're taking a look at the charts here. You can see we're looking at the fastest lap across these times. You can see the red is our average and the blue is our minimum lap time. So if you look at the minimum lap time, it's clearly on a steady decrease until we get to 80%. And then we have a big bump up almost as slow as 70% when we get to our 100% number. But again, 
um, that is our like one pack that we're able to get out on the track. So not the best example, but clearly I was not as fast at a hundred percent as I was at 80%. And again, taking a look at the three consecutive, I only had one chance to do one, three consecutive. That's why the average is the same as the minimum. We talk about hundred uh, percent. But the thing you do see, if you look at that blue line, that minimum, it's almost a straight line down from 54 seconds at 50% down to 46.5 at 80%. So as I kept increasing that throttle to me, it was really interesting just how much the times were dropping um, almost at a linear fashion. I mean, not quite, it should be getting a little bit less and less, but that was really fascinating. Now, the thing I do want to jump into here is the day two racing. I think this is actually a much better track to analyze this on. This is using full size championship size, multi GP seven foot by six foot gates. So this allows for a little bit faster racing. The layout of this track, I think is a little bit better. And I think it better illustrates what can happen with the throttle cap racing. Uh, it's also important to keep in mind that the track plays a huge role in what the right throttle cap is and how you use throttle caps and and what the result is uh but anyway as you can see here we're running at 50 percent first time uh this is our very first battery on the track that day i think i did actually run this at the prior race so i knew the track um but that's what we looked at 50 percent now after we got through through a few packs on here and i really started to figure out where to turn this is when things really really started to come together you can see the corkscrew there kept it nice and tight you can see that left turn there kept it nice and tight just really figuring out where do I turn? How do I turn? Again, if you watch that video on turning early, this is the same track we were learning about how we turn early and when we turn around that track to figure out the right racing lines. But just, man, I mean, look at that corkscrew. Want to make sure I can do that over and over again. Uh, that left turn is just super tough. You're taking so much speed and you have such little power to pull out of it. Um, it really just illustrates just how early you have to turn. All right, so bumping up to 60%, again, same thing as last time. Going from 50% to 60% is a huge jump on these things. Um, that 10% total and throttle, remember, because we're going from 50 to 60, that's actually a 20% faster quad. And you can really see it looks a whole lot faster out here on the course. But again, just trying to learn those lines, use the same lines I was doing at 50%, apply it to 60%, and hopefully that makes us faster around the track. And just real smooth, really happy with where I'm turning. Turn real early to make sure I keep that corkscrew tight. Turn real early to make sure I can make that left turn as it wants to just slide out without that power. Um, but again, lines are really starting to feel like they're coming together on this track for me. And again, as I got used to it, the, the last run at 60%, a little bit of a bobble there with not quite enough power, but just trying to keep it smooth. That was a perfect corkscrew there. That's how I like to do it. Nice left turn real early, kept some speed through there. This, you know, the double ladder, just keeping it nice and tight, spin over nice and tight. All these lines are starting to really come together for me. Again, a little bit of a mistake there, a little bit of a mistake there. Um, but overall, it's starting to come together at 60%. And I mentioned it before, a lot of this feels like VRL style racing. You just look at that throttle percent, you see 58, 58, 58, 58, just every turn, every move, 58%, very, very little drops from 58%. So this is like full throttle racing, even though it's a 60% throttle cap. So now we're going up to 70%. I think I mentioned it before, but 70% is almost like this little sweet spot where you feel like you have some speed, uh, but not too much speed. We can really work on getting those lines nice and tight. So again, corkscrew looks just like I did at 60%. And this is my first battery on the track at 70%. It looks very similar lines, just a whole lot faster. So again, for someone who's concerned about, well, what if I take this uh, to try to learn the lines as I go to a race, will I be caught off guard? I don't think so. Again, first track going up, that flies a bit different, but it's the same lines, the same turning spots. You're just doing it a little bit faster. So now as you get later in the day, really learn that 70%, trying to apply that VRL style, lots and lots of full throttle. Um, but those lines are really starting to feel good and they're starting to come together. The quad's starting to feel like it's going real fast around the track. Uh, this is a whole lot of fun racing at this sort of level. Definitely pulling it together, definitely better than we were seeing at the 60% level. All right, so now as we go up to 80%, 80% is where you're getting really close to as fast as the quad's going to go. But yet on this particular track, you can still just push really hard. I think 80% is kind of the number we're looking at from the other uh, people, 80 to 85% of where you'd see the maximum speed you're going to get around the track. So it slows you down enough so you're not blowing out the turns quite as bad, um, but yet it allows you to focus on those turns and keep good times. And as you watch this, you know, it's feeling really fast. And again, this is my first time flying 80% on this particular track after 70%. 
percent, you can see I'm already faster. Uh, a key thing to keep in mind from this particular day is every time I increase that throttle cap up to 80 percent, I got faster my very next battery than I had the battery before. So uh, that's a really good metric to see. And again, just really pulling it together. It feels really good. Um, almost feels like, you know, the theory is going to come true because it's really moving, especially now as you get a few batteries in at 80%, you're really used to it. It's really starting to feel quicker around this course, keeping that nice and tight. All of a sudden that left turns not quite so hard anymore. You have that added throttle to pull yourself out of it, but you're still trying to turn to the same spot. We were turning at 70, 60, 50% throttle caps, but lines are really starting to get come together as I have that added power of that 80% right now. So the key difference from this particular day versus day number one is we did the testing a little bit early. So as I'm going at 80%, there's still enough sunlight to actually fly at 100%. So while the last one only had one battery to fly at 100%, when I do 100% racing today, I get to actually try it out a bit longer and say, how can I learn how to do 100%? So right here, you're looking at my very first battery on the track at 100% after doing a, you know, a bunch of runs at lower 50, 60, 70, 80% throttle caps. So it's actually looking pretty good. It feels like roughly the same lines. It looks faster. And if I remember correctly, my very first run was actually a little bit faster at 100%, even that at 80%. So yeah, I mean, this track, it just, I loved flying this track. It was a whole lot of fun. A little bit of mistake there, a couple of bobbles. I did notice I was definitely making some more mistakes at 100% uh, than 80% but at least it was showing me I was able to take advantage of this particular quad flying at 100% throttle. All right, and so now as we kick it up after a few runs at 100%, we try to go a little bit faster. Um, and you can see it's relatively tight, not quite as tight as it was at 80%, um, but the quad is definitely faster on the track and it is starting to make up for some of those mistakes. That was a pretty good corkscrew there. Just make sure I turn early. Beautiful turn there. Nice and tight in that ladder. So you can see that all the work that we learned up while doing 50, 60, 70% uh, throttle caps, it is applying here at 100%, at least on this particular track, um, which is kind of showing me it's not necessarily the case that just flying at a lower um, throttle cap is going to result in faster lap times. So if we take a look at the particular data here, we're looking at our fastest laps we've had overall. You can see a steady decline, especially going from 50 to 60% on this track um, and just getting faster as we kept going down the line, as we got up to 100%. Um, so we did not see the same bump up that we saw the other day, but I think a big part of that is I had more time to actually run 100% racing. I wasn't limited to just one pack this day. Um, but you can see there, it made sense for me to get my best times possible to go up to 100%. Um, now, you are also looking at the average and minimum uh, lap times. You can notice that that spread is increasing as I get further and further away. Um, so that does tell you I'm not quite as consistent as there's more power in the quads, but I am definitely getting faster. So the important thing to look at is actually the top three consecutive. Um, that's a really good judge of just how consistent you have to be for uh, racing. So looking at this particular chart, you can see that even doing fastest three consecutive, I'm still getting faster and faster as I keep going, um, increasing the throttle cap. Um, the real weird thing is you can actually see a, a big jump in the disparity between the average and the minimum three consecutive time. Um, I did have one bad run when I was doing a 70% cap, and that really shows up in these particular charts. Uh, but if you compare the difference between the 80% and the 100%, you can see that there is a little bit more of a difference between uh, the average and the minimum, telling you I'm not quite as consistent um, with 100% versus 80. But again, the consistency that really matters for us with racing and qualifying is fastest three consecutive laps. So by that consistency standard, I'm almost a full second faster at 100% on this track than I was at 80%. Even though it was you know 1.5 second jump from 70 to 80 percent, and it was a almost two second jump going from 60 to 70 percent, so the rate of improvement is going down. But I saw personally on this track running my setup, I was fast as flying it at 100 uh, percent. So based on that, I think it's pretty fair to say it's not just about um, at a throttle cap; it's going to make it faster around the course. All right, guys. So that's pretty much going to wrap up this one. Uh, to kind of go through it again. The theory behind the whole thing was add yourself a throttle cap, you're actually going to go faster on the track. Um, I think for me personally, I debunked that's not a rule to follow. Um, it's going to be different by pilot. It's going to vary by track. The tighter, more technical the track gets, 
the more that throttle cap and slowing yourself down is going to help you from blowing out those turns, helping to keep those low times and those nice tight lines. Um, so that's important to keep in mind. Um, I think the big lesson for me personally, and probably for a lot of guys out there too, is don't be afraid to try out throttle caps on a track. Use the throttle cap as a tool. Add the throttle cap, learn the lines, learn when you should be turning, um, forcing yourself to live within the limits of your quad, having to pull out of turns um, that you really don't have enough power to, to get out of it really helps show when you should be turning on the track. So as you start adding that throttle cap back up, adding more power to your quad, you can keep those nice tight lines and really save time around the track. Um, but the key thing for me, like you saw, especially on day number two, and I could do more and more runs at 100%, I was fastest along the track with my particular setup flying at 100%. So to me, that tells me that for most situations, be prepared to run 100% if I want to be as fast as possible to place as high as possible on the tracks out there. Um, so that was the key takeaway for me. Again, you know, not to poo-poo on the hype and all. I think it's a fantastic tool. And I think for certain people, uh, certain pilots, they may be faster on a track uh, with that throttle cap. I just, I'd recommend that you try it out. See if you are consistently fast with that throttle. And then learn your limit and how to apply it to race day to get the best possible results you can. Um, I know that's what I did. I'm finding it really helpful. Hopefully you find these tests uh, helpful too. And uh, as always, let me know down below and I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.